Hi guys, this is gsnow.com and I'm here with the unboxing of the Xiaomi 12 Pro, the flagship from Xiaomi this year so far until the Ultra model comes. It promises sound by Harman Kardon and a price tag of around 650 euros. It's also the very first time I'm seeing a phone with three, three 50 megapixel cameras at the back side and uh, it gets a more sober approach, a more serious approach compared to its predecessors. It's still got the glass and metal thing going on. It highlights the main camera with a ring around it, but all these three fellows are 50 megapixel shooters. Okay, so Xiaomi 12 Pro. Uh, Xiaomi rushed to be one of the first companies with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor inside. Motorola stole that from them, but still this flagship was unveiled in December 2021. So three months have passed. In Europe, however, it has just launched. It took a while. This year, there's differentiation between the Xiaomi 12 with a smaller screen and the Xiaomi 12 Pro with a larger 6.73 inch panel. It's made of glass and metal. We have a glass at the front side, which is curved on the sides. Glass at the back, also gently curved, united by an aluminum frame. It's an unboxing, so let's see what's inside the box. I'm going to start with this envelope here, designed by Xiaomi. There's a metal key used to access the slots, and of course, also a case used to protect the glass from scratches. You can see it here, transparent and flexible. And here we have the quick start guide with all the useful info about operating the phone, safety information, SAR and all that, and warranty card. The start of the show is here. It's a hefty charger. It's huge. Even my laptop would be happy to be charged from it. It's a 120 watt charger from Xiaomi. It's not their first. They had similar charger on the Xiaomi 10 Ultra, the Xiaomi 11 Ultra and the Xiaomi 11 T Pro. And it charges uh, by connecting a USB-A to USB-C cable, which is this one here, thicker than usual to deliver all that power. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's everything we're getting with the current Xiaomi flagship, the 12 Pro. Let's get straight to it. So once again, uh, glass and metal and the color choices are gray, blue, purple and green. This is the gray one and these lines here that divide the cameras make it seem more sober, more serious compared to the playful predecessors. Glass, aluminum and glass again with curved sides. This is Gorilla Glass Victus that we have applied here, at least for the screen. There is an 8.2 millimeter thickness for the waistline and a hefty 204 grams, but they're pretty well distributed with a penchant for making this area a bit heavier than the rest. At least they didn't expand the camera all the way here like Poco does and some other branches and companies. It's pretty easy to wield. That's the shocking part for me. The diagonal is quite big and in spite of that, I'm having no trouble in finding these buttons with my finger here and uh, reaching all the areas of the screen that I want to, even though I don't have the biggest hand out there. Sadly, it doesn't have IP certification. So there's that. Don't dunk it in water. The screen you're seeing right here, uh, this one is a 6.73 inch uh, LTPO AMOLED panel. LTPO means it can drop from 120 hertz to as low as 10 hertz or even 1 hertz. It shows 1 billion colors, has 120 hertz refresh rate, Dolby Vision, HDR10+, and a crazy level of... Uh, something like 1500 nits of brightness. The resolution is also pretty impressive. 3200 over 1440 pixels. Gorilla Glass Victus protection and gamers will be happy to know that we have 480 hertz touch sampling rate which is basically the responsiveness of their gaming experience. Now the CPU inside is the famous one, you know it already, Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. 4 nanometer manufactured in the Samsung's factories for now. TSMC will take over in a few months. The Adreno 730 GPU in the mix. We have the version with 12 gigs of RAM as well as 256 gigabytes of storage. There are also versions with 8 gigs and 128 gigs. No micro SD sadly and the battery doesn't go all the way to 5000 milliampere hour. It sticks to 4600 milliampere hour. At least it charges at 120 watts wired. Also the wireless charging is pretty impressive. 50 watts. It promises a full charge in 42 minutes. That's very good. There's also reverse charge. If you put a phone here or headphones or watch, it charges at 10 watts. Stereo speakers. We can definitely tell that we have one here. It's a pretty badass integration design wise. So there's one here 
there's also one here there are actually four speakers on the phone with harman cardon tuning and here you can also see the infrared emitter and a microphone while at the bottom side usb-c port microphone again and the sim tray of course this baby has a wi-fi 6e it also has a 5g connectivity and you just saw me using the optical screen embedded fingerprint scanner now on the connectivity front there's bluetooth 5.2 gps a gps glonass bds galileo qzss navic which is the indian navigation system and there's nfc for your payment needs on the camera front, this uh, punch hole here hides a 32 megapixel selfie camera which can shoot video in full HD up to 60 frames. I'm actually curious about that, so let's see what the resolution is. Yes, just full HD, 60 frames. I don't get why um, there aren't more companies which allow you to film in 4K with the selfie camera with the flagship. Even older iPhones do that. Anyways. Back to the back side, this main fellow is the 50 megapixel camera with f1.9 aperture, a brand new Sony IMX707 sensor, which splits the pixels, it uh, combines them 4 in 1, takes 12.5 megapixel shots. It's actually a pretty generous sensor, 1 over 1.28 inches, and has dual pixel phase detection autofocus and optical emit stabilization, plus a nifty metal ring around it to highlight it. The other two 50 megapixel sensors are Samsung ones. GN1 sensors. The ultra wide camera has f2.2 aperture and 115 degrees. The telephoto one only handles 2x optical zoom, doesn't have optical image stabilization, and I'm sad to inform you there's no uh, uh, autofocus on the ultra wide camera, there's no autofocus on the selfie camera, just fixed focus. We have dual tone, dual LED flash, we have 8K video capture for the main cam, as well as 4K 60 frames per second, and you can even shoot HDR10 content. A lot of options here for the camera. We have a short video, we have vlog, movie effects, dual video, documents, time-lapse, even super moon, night mode, panorama, slow motion and long exposure. I'm curious if the movie effects have changed, I remember those from last year being cool, magic zoom, slow shutter, time freeze, uh, night time-lapse, parallel world, they're the same as last year. Okay, we also have a portrait mode with AI, this is the photo department also with AI, and options like tilt shift, movie frame, timed burst. This is the video section where you can go all the way up to 8K. I'm guessing, yes, 24 frames, 4K 60 frames. What happened to 4K 120 frames it was available on the Zenfone 7 Pro. Anyway, check out the stabilization here. There are multiple options. There's steady video and steady video pro, which I look forward to testing. I'm guessing one of them involves the ultra wide camera. The Pro mode applies to both photos and videos, lets you tweak exposure, ISO, shutter, focus and white balance. Now aside from that, finally we get to see here a phone which runs MIUI 13 on top of Android 12, not 11, even though there aren't many changes from that. This is the control center and this is the notification area, no longer in a drop down setup. If you pinch the screen, you're treated to a new setup for the widgets. The widgets are pretty much the same as the previous generation and we have those beautiful super wallpapers to look at and to enjoy with improved effects from the previous generation. We have an app drawer split into categories, communication, entertainment, photography, tools, news and reading and shopping. And there's much more. Uh, one of the interesting things is that uh, Xiaomi found that after 36 months your phone has greatly reduced performance and now offers uh, I would say 60% improved defragmentation, so that's nice. We also have a floating window for multitasking. You can also use gestures instead of these buttons. And Xiaomi keeps the dual column multitasking in the recent department. We'll discover more about MIUI 13 as time goes by. For now, this is just the unboxing. I find the design to be a bit more serious and sober. The device be being uh, very easy to handle in spite of the huge diagonal and I'm very curious about those two stabilization modes and why all the fuss about the new Sony sensor from here circled with a metal ring. I'm pretty curious about that. Okay, so we'll go to the tests and be back with a full review. Obviously, the charging is one of the selling points, but I look forward to seeing how much usage can damage the battery or not. That's it from us, from jsnron.com. Goodbye.